Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappointed! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And finally, the big news we've kind of all been waiting for for DC Comics. The details. We got the deets, people, on DC's future state. was going to basically uh, take place within January and February. So in December, we're getting uh, Endless Winter, which is a contained event in December. In January and February, we're getting Future State. It's They're basically waiting to relaunch everything. With, well, not everything. A lot of the new, uh, the ongoing DC Comics in March with all new creative teams. Obviously, we'll get getting James Tynion's or Tynion's Batman is going to keep, keep coming back on. As far as I know, uh, Peter J. Tomasio is to be on Detective Comics. Brian Michael Bendis will be off of Superman Action Comics. We're not sure who the who the new creative team was on that. So a lot of the there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of churn going on. Obviously, there there was a new um, Flash creator this month. Green Lantern will, will be kind of uh, wrapping up by that point. So uh, big things are happening at the very beginning of of uh, 2021, and Future State's going to be a big part of that. I do want to say this kind of. This is 5G, Generation 5, whatever you want to call it. And I think this has been terribly botched from the beginning. They let kind of bleeding cool get out in front of them. They mischaracterized what uh, Generation 5 was going to be. It, it basically got a huge stain on it. This was going to be basically um, mar all new Marvel or whatever it is, uh, all new, all different Marvel, Marvel Legacy, all, all that kind of crap that everyone uh, rejected roundly because it was very disappointing. People didn't like all the, the main heroes being replaced. But it is going to happen. It, it's kind of weird. you know. Just recently at the DC Fandom event, Jim Lee, who's kind of the head of DC Comics, as far as creative goes, said, you will not see anything called Generation 5. Well, of course we're not saying Generation 5, but we are getting uh, Generation 5. I don't know why they, they keep trying... They should, they should have just gotten out in front of this and be like, listen, 5G was going to be this a big event. We've condensed it now. We've rebranded it. But essentially, you are still going to get Generation 5. And that, that's essentially what's happening here. Now, before I get into the details of all the uh, of all the series, because we do have that information now, I do want to say if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Either way, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on DC Future State coming out in January 2021 and wrapping up in February 2021. You know, what are your thoughts on these series? What are your thoughts on the creative teams? I'm going to tell you right now, up front, my thoughts on the creative team. Very underwhelming. So let's let's just kind of get into to some of the information in the main article, then we'll get into the details of each of the of the the three lines. There's a Batman line, a Superman line, and a Justice League line. And it says, uh, all new characters will take on iconic mantles of fan favorite heroes in DC Future State with new series launching with creative talent from the worlds of television, movies, and animation. March of 2021, we'll see DC's normal publishing line return, continue existing storylines from 2020, and introducing new, arc new arcs for the year. And this is what DC executive editor Mary Javins had to say. The DC universe has always been fertile grounds for new and refreshing takes on our characters and DC Future State definitely contributes to this legacy when the events uh, when the event begins in january some savvy readers will not only pick up on some of the breadcrumbs that have already been tossed out in our current titles but will also find new hints and clues as to what's to come in 2021 so this will have some effects on dc comics ongoing series in 2021 maybe it'll it'll have some breadcrumbs for another event maybe this isn't just what generation 5 is going to be maybe they're going to keep keep working with it i wouldn't be surprised with that like I said, this is basically they they've broken it into three different kind of um, not imprints, but it's three different lines. There's a Batman, a Superman, and a Justice League line. So let's do Batman first. He's the biggest character. Now we knew that we were going to be getting a John Ridley Batman series, but I thought it was going to be like DC Black Label or its own independent series. That is not that is not true. That is actually in Future State Batman. And what we're going to be receiving are DC Futures uh, Batman Secret Titles. We're going to get oversight comics. So in like Future State Batman 1 through 4, they're all going to have a, a backup title. The next Batman is going to be basically the main title. 
the next Batman one through four, one through four. This is the John Ridley Batman comic we were talking about. Uh, Nick Darrington and Laura Brog on there. Probably going to skip that. Then there's also going to be backup stories, and you can kind of see it right here on the cover. It says featuring outsiders and Arkham Knights. And this one says featuring Batgirls and Gotham City Sirens. So there's going to be backup stories, and outsiders is going to be Brandon Thomas and Sumit Kumar. Sumit Kumar is a fantastic artist. If they were doing like an outsiders, just a 24 page regular comic, I would probably buy it. Because just for his art, because I think it's going to be dope. But it's going to be the backup story, so I'll probably be skipping that. Arkham Knights, Paul Jenkins and Jack Herbert. Batgirls, V.I. Allen and An Aniki. I don't know who that is. Uh, V.I. Allen. Actually, I'm surprised she's not on Wonder Woman. She had the best story in Wonder Woman 750, but she's going to be on Batgirls. Easily avoidable. Gotham City Siren Sirens, Paula Sevinger and Emanuela Lup uh, Lupacino. And then the, the Dark Detective 1 through 4 is going to be written by Mariko Tamaki with Dan Moore. Dan Moore is a good artist. Mariko Tamaki, uh, not a great cr uh, creator. Certainly much better at DC. Her Wonder Woman stuff is way better than anything she did at Marvel, but still not that good. And we get Matthew Rosenberg on Grifters. Uh, easily, <laughs> easily passed up. And I imagine this Red Hood story will also be like a backup story within uh, Dark Detectives. Joshua Williamson on Red Hood would be awesome. I hope maybe Joshua Williamson will be the... The creator on Red Hood coming out of this. That would be great. But we do not know. But here's, you know, some pretty generic covers. Ooh, somebody's targeting Batman. Yeah, see, also Grifters. So those are backup stories for Dark Detectives, Mariko Tamaki on Detective Comics. Something I never wanted, and I still don't. It's not something I didn't even know I wanted. It's something I absolutely know I still don't want. I cannot... These, these uh, creative teams are very underwhelming. I'm just putting that out there. Now, with the monthly miniseries that they have that are related to Batman, we've got Batman Superman, Superman by uh, Gene Yang and Ben Oliver. Not impressed by Gene Yang, personally. Catwoman by Ram V and Otto Schmidt. This is probably a buy. Ram V's recent Catwoman 25 was very good. Ram V is also one of my favorite writers. He did um, These Savage Shorts. One of my favorite Comic stories of 2018, 2019. Also, Sumit Kumar was on the, was the artist on that. It was amazing. Now, her future state Harley Quinn, Stephanie Phillips, and Simone DeMio. That is a great artist for that for that series. It fits her character really well. So that might be worth picking up just for the artist alone. Not a big fan of Stephanie Phillips. Nightwing, Andrew Constant, Nicholas Scott. Nightwing's one of my favorite characters. That's a pass. Now, this one I do find interesting. Robin Eternal. I like Robin. I would imagine this is probably Damien Wayne or Damien Wayne's son as Robin, Robin Eternal. Eddie Barrow's on art. That alone is probably worth it. That's probably going to be pretty dope. I love Eddie Barrow's art. So there's that one. Here's some of the from the covers, Batman, Superman. They're also being targeted. Like I said, these are pretty generic covers. Look at these silly logos too. Is this an X-Men comic? Is Catwoman part of Dawn of X now? Is that what it is? Looks like we got a new version of uh, Harley Quinn. Nightwing looks pretty cool. Yeah, this is this is the one I would be most interested in. So those are the Batman comics we're going to be getting in Future State. Um, not very exciting, in my opinion. If you're really excited for these, let me know why in the comment section. Change my mind. Let me know where I missed the boat and which one of these Batman comics I should be really excited about. Because I'm only pretty excited about two or three of them. So getting into Superman. Superman has been much maligned for quite a while. Obviously under the tutelage or the stewardship of Brian Michael Bendis. So Batman Future State Metropolis. So these are also going to have... Right, these are featuring. Okay. Yeah, okay. These are also going to have, I guess, backup stories. Batman Future State of Superman of Metropolis. It's going to be Sean Lewis and John Timms. No. The Guardian, Sean Lewis and Cully Hamner. Cully Hamner is an all right artist. Mr. Miracle, Brandon Easton and Valentin De uh, Delandro. No. Future State Superman Worlds, Worlds of War. 
Philip Kennedy Johnson. Now we're talking, and Michael Yannick. I like Philip Kennedy Johnson. His last, the last God is absolutely dope. Michael Yannick, when he is properly motivated and has time, his uh, his art is pretty good. You know, sometimes it can feel a little bit uh, stale, but that's probably something I'll check out. Superman uh, Worlds of Worlds of War, which is going to be a four parter, is something I'll probably have to check out. Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad, and Gleb Melnikov on Midnighter. Doc is going to be excited about that. He loves Midnighter. Black Racer, Jeremy Adams, Mr. Miracle, also Brandon Easton, and, and that's the same team. Future State, Immortal Wonder Woman. I wonder why she's not part of the, the Justice League lineup. Whatever. Wonder Immortal Wonder Woman, Becky Cloonan again, Conrad and Jim Bartell. Nubia, I'm assuming that's the backup story. L.O. McKinney, Aletha Martinez, Mark Morales. Never heard of any of them. Let's see these covers. This one actually looks better than the Batwoman ones. At least he's holding uh, – is that Candor? It looks like Metropolis. He's got the bottled city of Metropolis, people. And you're going to be getting – Jonathan Ken, I imagine that is Superman, Guardian, and Mr. Miracle. I'm assuming those are the backup stories. So here we got Superman Worlds of War, Philip Kennedy Johnson. Yes, please. I will be reading that one. Immortal Wonder Woman. Maybe she's uh, maybe she's going to. Yeah, there you go. Maybe she's going the Marvel way too. Aren't they the ones that have the, the immortal stuff? So also going on in Future State, we got another one. Uh, the House of L by Philip Kennedy Johnson and Scott Godlewski. Probably get that one just because of the writer. Future State, Kara zor -El, Superwoman, Marguerite Bennett, and Marguerite's, uh, I'm going to say it's Savage, but it's probably Sauvage. I don't know. Marguerite Bennett's actually a pretty decent writer, but I'm not the world's biggest Superwoman fan. When it says Superwoman, you know, is that, um, does that mean it's, it's Lois's cousin? Wasn't she the last Superwoman? I'm not sure. Maybe that'll be Lois Lane as Superwoman. No, no, it's Kara Kara zor -El. It tells it says it right there. She's no longer super. She's Superwoman. Legion of Superheroes, Brian Michael Bendis and Riley Rossma. That is an instant pass. Future State Superman Wonder Woman by Dan Waters and Leela DeLuca. No, thank you. Superman versus Imperius Lex. Mark Russell and Steve Pugh. Mark Russell is absolutely an instant pass. He's just as bad as Michael, Mike, Brian Michael Bendis, in my opinion. Future State Wonder Woman by Joelle Jones. That's probably a read. I like her art. Don't know that she's all that great a writer. Didn't didn't think she was a, the best writer on Catwoman, but she was certainly serviceable. Ooh, this Kara zor Superwoman cover does not inspire confidence, people. Could you imagine? Is there anything more generic than this? I, I think not. Uh, Legion of Superheroes, pretty interesting stuff, but it's Brian Michael Bendis. So there you go. Superman, Wonder Woman, pretty generic. Superman versus Imperious Lex, Mark Russell, no way. This is probably the big winner out of there, besides the uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson stuff. It's a good cover. Still pretty uh, pretty boring, but the, the new costume looks pretty cool. Obviously, that is not uh, Diana Prince. This is a new Wonder Woman. So there you go. Those are the Superman comics. So let's get into the new Justice League Future State. And Justice League 1 and 2, Joshua Williamson, Robinson Roca. That's a buy, people. Justice League Dark, Ram V, Marcio Takara. Absolute buy. So those two sound pretty good. Two outstanding writers. Ram V has been working on Justice League Dark for a while. Probably better in the horror genre anyway. On Green Lanterns, Jeffrey Thorne and Tom Rainey. Nope. Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, Josie Campbell, Ryan Caddy, Ernie Altbacker with Sammy, Sammy Bossery and Clayton Henry. I like Clayton Henry. He's a pretty good artist. He, he just uh, he just did the first issue of Flash, but I'll probably pass on that one too. Even though I love Green Lantern, it's like my favorite DC character, but nothing about this inspires confidence. Although it's going to have Guy Gardner and Jess Cruz. I like both those hair, those heroes. That must be a backup story. Because obviously it looks like this is uh, Kilwag and John Stewart. Suicide Squad. 
Ooh, what's what happened to Aquaman? And this Batman looks pretty evil, and she's got a weird smile on her face. That's not the Flash. All right, this is gonna be weird. Suicide Squad: Robbie Thomas and Javi Fernandez. Javi Fernandez is a great artist. I don't like Robbie Thompson. This is a maybe, definite maybe. Black Adam by Jeremy Adams and Fernando Pizarin is gonna be a backup story. Probably can pass on that. The Flash. We got Aquaman. We got Teen Titans. Shazam. Swamp Thing. Bunch of characters I like. Aquaman, Brandon Thomas, Daniel Semperi. Nope. The Flash, Brandon Bietti, Dale Eaglesham. Definite maybe. I like Dale Eaglesham. Teen Titans, Tim Sheridan, Rafa Sandoval. I like Rafa Sandoval as well. Definite maybe. Shazam, Tim Sheridan, Eduardo Pensica. Not sure about that one, but Swamp Thing. Ray and B and Mike Perkins. Absolutely. That's like, that might be the best, best creative pairing they have on the whole. And the whole slate, Ram V and Mike Perkins will be pretty, pretty, pretty dope together. So I know that's the those are the lineups, those are the titles, those are going to be going out from January to February. Not extremely exciting, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. I might be wrong. You know, are you guys looking forward to these new versions of Superman and the Superman family? If you are, you know, where have I gone wrong? What did I miss? Tell me the creator that got you excited that I totally brushed off and didn't even realize how amazing they were same thing goes with justice league you know i definitely want to hear your thoughts are you as underwhelmed with these creative teams as i am where's robert venditti there's no robert venditti in this my favorite comic book writer where's scott snyder he's the guy that's driving the ship right now where's james tiny he's the hottest writer at dc comics right now where's jeff johns the best writer at dc comics right now there's a lot of missing talent in there. Obviously, there's a lot of missing artistic talent as well. Although there's there's some pretty decent artists in there. I do like the little Kimmy Johnson. I do like Ram B. So I like those guys getting some shine and opportunity to get on some of these uh, more premier characters and, and get their opportunity. Not sure that we're getting a lot of previews on what the new creative teams are going to be. In fact, I don't think we're getting really any. But maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm more excited to hear what the new creative teams are going to be in March and the new direction of DC Comics after Future State. Because um, while I was getting excited for G Generation 5, now that I'm seeing now that I'm seeing the deets, it's not nearly as exciting as I anticipated it to be. This sounds um, pretty boring. Not very exciting. There, there's a few things in there. Mostly the, those covers are all very generic. Doesn't feel like a lot's being put into them. And, uh, you know, this is just them buying time until they can do what they really want to do in March. You know, I guess they didn't want to throw away all the work they had put into Generation 5. We're going to cram it into a convergence-like event. We thought maybe it would be like um, Age of Apocalypse. This doesn't feel like they're all connected. These feel like one-shot independent stories. Maybe there will be some connections, but I don't think there's like an overarching story arc like we're going to be getting in Endless Winter like we would have gotten in Age of Apocalypse. This feels more like, like I don't know, a reset. This is, this is a convergence, which wasn't really well, well received. So I don't think this is going to be a big moneymaker. This might be a good jumping off point for a lot of DC Comics fans. I don't know. Maybe it's a good jumping on point for people that stepped away, didn't like the extremely dark direction that, um, you know, you're the villain and Dark Knight's metal and Dark Knight's death metal and, and all the darkness that's been in, enveloping the DC Comics universe has had. Maybe we'll have a more hopeful DC Comics universe coming out of this. I'm not optimistic about that by any means, but uh, you never know. That, that could be the case. No, I'm not excited. I think this is uh, this looks pretty bad. Definitely not what I was expecting. I thought you know Generation Five was going to be more exciting than this. So I don't know. What do you think? Did Jim Lee outright lie with DC fandom when he said there will be no generations Generation Five event? Yeah. Because you changed the name, it's the same thing. They've they have botched this horribly. They do you gotta get out in front of these things, brand it yourself, let the, the fans know what it's gonna be. And we still don't even know what future state is gonna be. It's just different version of the heroes in the future. Is it if is it is it an overarching story? Is it you know what's the purpose of future state? Is it just to create a new universe that you can play in? And we'll be getting imprints of these comics in the future. Is that what the future is going to be? None of those details are really in here. So I don't know. DC doing what DC does. They're they're 
they're just not able to get out in front of this stuff. They're not able to, you know, focus the narrative and let people know what they what to be expecting from future state. I'm not on board. I will be getting some of these, and and we'll see how it goes. There you go. That's what we got, folks. We actually have finally have comic book news. Looks like we will be getting the solicitation information from Marvel and DC for January 2021 uh, relatively shortly. This is probably going to be almost all of DC uh, DC Comics. Maybe there'll be some black label stuff and things like that that I'll be able to cover. But we'll definitely be talking about Marvel as well. We got a lot of new information on the King in Black and some other stuff. So thank you all very much. I'll talk to you later.